Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be talking about all of the 2019 releases I still haven't read yet. <laughs> First off, before I get started, sorry if you hear noises in the background. I have other people in this house, so you might hear other noises. <laughs> but yeah, I have a giant stack, two stacks, of 2019 releases that uh, I still haven't read yet. <laughs> um, I'm only going to be talking about physical books. There are plenty of audiobooks and ebooks that were released in 2019 that I haven't read yet also, but this is a large pile, so I'm just going to be talking about physical books today. Okay, before I talk about all of these books, I need your help. So I need y'all to comment down below the top three that you would like me to read before the end of 2019. Like, I need help deciding with some of these. So top three that you think I should read in December, please leave them down below in the comments or if you just have one that's fine too just please let me know what which ones i should read because there are a lot and i'm kind of really embarrassed that i have so many 2019 reads that i uh, still have not read yet okay so i better get started i kind of separated them into paperbacks and hardbacks i guess i'll talk about the hardbacks first because there are way more. <laughs> a book that I started about a week ago is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Maherin. I have yet to pick this up because I put it down for the Buzzwordathon, but I really want to pick it up soon um, after I finish the book I'm still reading from the Buzzwordathon. This is a, I believe, a new adult fantasy book dealing with witches and witch hunters. We have our main character, Woman, who is forced to marry a witch hunter but she is a witch so that's all I know about this one I've heard great things about it I have been getting kind of behind in reading my fantasy reads hopefully maybe this one will get me more into the genre again because I do love fantasy so far I've read maybe one chapter and I remember really loving it so I'm pretty sure I'm going to be completing this before the end of 2019. Next we have Call It What You Want by Bridget Kemmerer. I went to a signing that had Bridget Kemmerer there and I got a few of my books signed including this one. This is her newest release it is a modern day retelling of Robin Hood, basically. Um, we have our main character named Rob, whose father is guilty for, I believe, embezzling so many people in their town. Everyone hates him now. So I think it's, it's about him giving the money back secretly to all of the people that his father was stealing from. This looks really good. I've never read a Robin Hood retelling before. So I'm excited for this one too. The next 2019 release that I have not read yet is Past Perfect Life by Elizabeth Yulberg. Elizabeth Yulberg was at the same signing as um, Bridget Kemmerer, so I picked up her new release as well because it sounded so good. This is about our main character named Allie who applies for college, but all of her applications get sent back because her social security card number is fraudulent and she realizes that she's not who she thinks she is and she's not who her father claims to be and her father may not even be her father. Dun dun dun! <laughs> this sounded so good. I didn't pre-order this before the signing but I just heard Elizabeth talk about this book and she read the first chapter to us. I was like I need that book. This still sounds super interesting to me and I cannot wait to pick this one up. Next we have There's Something About Sweetie by Sandhya Manon. I have never read a Sandhya Manon book before because her previous two books hadn't really appealed to me before and then I heard about this one. Um, this one is about our main character named Sweetie who is on the track team and she is plus size. Sweetie obviously goes through a lot of struggles. Her parents are constantly telling her to lose weight and this is about her and I believe her love interest whose parents really want him to date an Indian American girl and they like make him sign a contract to date an Indian American girl. That's what I've gotten out of the summary so far. This just sounded so cute and so wonderful. I want to read more books about girls with curves, so I picked this one up and will hopefully read it very soon. Next we have a book I pre-ordered at the beginning of the year and I can't believe I have not read yet still. 
We have This Is Not A Love Scene by S.C. Miguel. I was so excited for this book. It's fairly short too. I don't know why I haven't picked it up yet. It sounded so good. I pre-ordered it and everything. This is about our main character named Maeve who has a very rare form of muscular dystrophy and she is in a wheelchair and she is really into filmmaking and really wants to direct her own film and she hires this actor named Cole to be in her film and he is very tall, bearded, muscular, just like a beautiful hunk of a man. Maeve develops a crush on him but she thinks that like no one's ever gonna want to be with me because I'm in a wheelchair. Cole's never gonna want to be with me because I'm in a wheelchair. But Cole, maybe, actually has feelings for me. Just rereading the summary, like, I want to pick this up right now. Like, I don't know why I haven't done it yet. This sounds so good. I think I'm going to try to read this in December because this just sounds like a really cute romance read that is perfect for the winter Christmassy time. Next, we have Stealing Home by Becky Wallace. Becky Wallace was at the book signing with Elizabeth Yulberg and Bridget Kemmerer, so I picked up her book as well. This is a YA contemporary romance book. This is about our main character named Ryan, who is the daughter of the owner of a very big baseball team, and um, it is her relationship, I believe, with the new young recruit on the baseball team. It seems really cute. This cover is really cute. I heard Becky talk about it, and she read the first chapter from it, and I needed to get a copy, so this sounds so cute and I can't wait to get to this one as well. Next we have The Princess and the Fangirl by Ashley Poston. This is the companion book to Geekerella, which is a Cinderella retelling involving fandom. This is, I believe, the Princess and the Pauper retelling involving fandom, I believe, at a like Comic-Con convention kind of thing. Um, that's all that I know about it. I believe maybe these two girls, one of them is an actress in a very big sci-fi TV show, and another girl's just a regular girl and they end up actually looking very similar and they end up switching who they are for a day kind of kind of like the princess and the pauper i don't know why i haven't picked this one up yet i honestly have no idea it sounds really cute next we have a book i'm very disappointed that i have not read yet we have wayward son by rainbow rowell this is the sequel to carry on one of my favorite books of all time <laughs> i pre-ordered this it came to my doorstep i heard mixed reviews <laughs> So I've been kind of scared to pick it up. I think people say that this really doesn't really have that much of a storyline to it, which I don't mind. I'm in it for Baz and Simon, so hopefully I will get my fill with this one when I read it. Next, we have another sequel. I'm very disappointed that I have not read yet. We have Find Me Their Bones by Sarah Wolf. If this looks familiar, there's the first book right there. One of my favorite books of all time and is probably my favorite young adult fantasy book. Um, this is the continuation to the story. That one ended on a huge cliffhanger. I believe this came out at the very beginning of November. It's been a month and I haven't read it yet. I'm very disappointed in myself. The first book is about our main character named Zira, who is a heartless in this fantasy land that this book takes place in. Heartless people are essentially a witch's servant if that makes sense. So a heartless is formed when a witch takes the heart out of a human body, puts it in a jar, and the human can stay alive without their heart but they are con essentially cr controlled by this witch. Zira became heartless when she was 16. It's been two years since she's been heartless so she is a 18 year old in a 16 year old body in a heartless body and you cannot travel more than a couple miles away from your heart in your jar and her witch who's actually pretty nice, like she doesn't treat her bad whatsoever, um, keeps her jar like locked up safe, she can't access it. And so the witches in the community are at war with the humans in their kingdom. So Zira's witch proposes the idea with a bunch of other witches to Zira to go to the kingdom and pretend to be a suitor for the prince, but actually try to turn him into a heartless, take his heart, turn him into a heartless, so that they can control his father, the king. It is her going into court, trying to deal with a bunch of different things. You'll you'll see when you read the book, if you read it, please read it, please read it, please read it. And she may end up falling for the prince that she is trying to kill, essentially. This is the continuation to that. The first one ended on a huge cliffhanger, so 
I am probably going to read this in December. I think this is going to be one that I pick up as soon as possible when school gets out in two weeks. Next we have Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetys. I picked this book up because I love Ruta Sepetys. She wrote one of my favorite books of all time, Salt to the Sea. I got Salt to the Sea and Fountains of Silence signed at a book signing from um, my local small bookshop. And this one I don't know much about because I just pick up any Brutus Petty's book. Uh, this one I believe though takes place in Spain maybe? And it's a romance between a guy visiting Spain and a girl who lives in Spain. That's all I know that it takes place in Spain. Um, it's a hunker chunker of a book. I'm probably gonna save this one until 2020 uh, so I can get to some other smaller books in December. Um, but this does look really great and I will hopefully read it when the new year comes. Next we have Again But Better by Christine Riccio. This came out I believe in May and I haven't read it yet. This is about our main character named Shane who studies abroad and that's all I know. We follow her journey studying abroad. I believe it takes place in two different time periods and there's a little bit of fantastical elements woven in there if I'm not mistaken. I haven't picked this one up yet to be honest because I haven't really been in the mood. It hasn't really piqued my interest yet. I don't know anything about studying abroad. I've never been abroad. I haven't traveled basically out of Texas. It hasn't really been something I've been intrigued by recently. Um, hopefully though I will pick it up sometime in 2020 because it does sound like a very interesting book. I really 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 wanted to support Christine though because I'm so excited and proud that she put out a book. Hopefully I will really love this and pick this one up as soon as possible in 2020. Next is Hot Dog Girl by Jennifer Dugan. This is about our main character who dresses up as a hot dog at a fair and I believe she has a really big crush on the prince at the fair. Um, this just looked really cute. I believe I got it really cheap at Half Price Books one day so I saw it and picked it up. It looks really cute and um, like a great YA contemporary. I haven't read a great YA contemporary in a while so hopefully this fits the bill for that one. Next we have American Royals by Catherine McGee. This was another opportunity to get a book signed at my local small bookstore um, so I jumped at the chance. This is about a futuristic world United States. Instead of Washington becoming um, the president of the United States, he becomes the king of the United States. So we have a monarchy in America. So I guess this is modern day and there are American royals and I believe there are three main characters. I don't know. That's all I know about it. This did sound really great. I believe I bought this at first thinking that it was a romance book when it's actually I believe either a YA or new adult book but that's okay. I like both those genres as well but this just looks really great. I've heard great things about it so Hopefully I will get to this one as soon as possible as well. Next we have House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig. I picked this one up on a whim because I've been hearing great things about it, but I think I have been putting it off because people have told me it's kind of creepy and a little bit scary and I don't do well with scary books or scary things. So I don't know when I'm going to get to this one. Who knows? I'm knowing me I'd probably save it for probably like Halloween of next year. This is a I think like mystical creepy retelling of the 12 Dancing Princesses which I loved that Barbie movie so much when I was a kid. So I've never read anything, seen anything about the 12 Dancing Princesses since then. We'll see how I feel about this one. I don't know if I'm going to read this before the end of 2019. I think I'm just this big scaredy cat. <laughs> and the last out of the hardback books we have The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. I picked this one up from recommendation from Jen and Ashley who are in the Love Good Ladies book club with me. This is about our two main characters who end up having to share an apartment together and share a bed together but they never actually share the bed together because I believe he has a night job and she has a day job so he stays there during the day while she is at work and she stays there like sleeps there at night while he's at work and they don't know each other they've never met each other in person but I guess they start forming this relationship through leaving notes for each other throughout the apartment um, when the other person's not there. That sounded really cute and really interesting. I thought this was a romance book but apparently people have been saying it's actually a women's fiction novel which I don't know if I've ever read a women's fiction novel. All the more reason for me to pick this one up to get into that genre. Let me know if I need to read this one as soon as possible. Next we have Well Met by Jen DeLuca. This is the Lovely Ladies book club pick for the months of November and December. We're going to do our live show in between probably like the 12th and the 25th. Be sure to keep updated on my Twitter and Jen and Ash's Twitter to figure out when our live show will actually be. But this is a romance book. 
that takes place at a Ren Fair. I believe these two main characters like work at a Ren Fair and um, their characters like fall in love but they actually hate each other. That just sounds like a recipe for a very good time so I'm very excited to read this with Jen and Ashley and I hope that y'all pick this one up soon and if you've already read it be sure to tune in to our live show later in the month of December. Next we have Twice in a Blue Moon by Christina Lauren. I was supposed to read this for the Buzzwordathon, but I didn't. <laughs> I've been hearing very mixed things about this book. This is about our main character named Sam and Tate, and I believe they formed a relationship in high school, and then something happened, and then they get reunited years, years, years later. I think there's two different time periods at the beginning of the book. I believe it's high school, and then it jumps to present day when they're older. I've been hearing mixed things about it, so I don't know how I'm going to feel about it. Hopefully, I like it though. I'm very very nervous and I think that's why I haven't picked it up yet. Next is my most recent purchase. We have the Romance Book Club by Lisa K. Adams. This is about our main character named Gavin who is on a really popular famous baseball team and his marriage is kind of crumbling and turns out all of his teammates are in a secret romance book club to help them figure out women to be romantic towards women so they invite Gavin to be in their romance romance book club so I believe it's about him reading this romance book and forming a better relationship with his wife and trying to save his marriage that sounds so good I even have a bookmark in it because I really want to start it as soon as possible um, so I believe I'm going to be reading this one in December it sounds so good their cover is beautiful and I've been hearing nothing but great things about it so I'm excited to read this one next we have Faker by Sarah Smith this is a romance book about a woman who is Part, a part of a construction company. I believe she falls for a man who is on the construction company also. So that's all I know about it. I've been hearing mixed things about this one as well. So I think that's why I haven't picked it up yet. Let me know if I need to read this one before the end of 2019 also. Okay, we're down to our last three. <laughs> okay, the next one, I'm very, very, very disappointed in myself that I have not read this one yet. The Bride Test by Helen Huang. The Kiss Quotient was one of my favorite favorite reads of last year. One of my favorite books of all time and I don't know why I haven't read this one yet. I pre-ordered this one and everything. was so excited to read this one. The male main character has a form of autism and his mom orders him a mail order bride from Taiwan. Jess from Peace Love Books absolutely loves this book so um I feel like she would really want me to read this one before the end of 2019. It looks really good. I don't know why I no idea why I haven't picked it up yet. I really want to though, so hopefully I will soon. <laughs> Next we have The Right Swipe by Alicia Rye. This one is a spinoff series of a series I read earlier this year. I believe it's called The Forbidden Series. That is a trilogy that I absolutely loved, um, but they are different covers. They're not illustrated covers, um, so I feel, feel like that's why people don't know about that series, but this is a spinoff of that. This is the sister of one of the male love interests, I believe in book three of that series. Sorry, I'm pointing over there. The series is over there. Um, so it's about Rhiannon and she develops this online dating app. I don't know who the guy is at all. I mainly picked this book up because it's Alicia Rye and it's a spin-off series of the other series. So that's the only reason why I picked this one up. But I have been hearing really, really, really great things about this one. I'm really, really, really looking forward to reading this one. And the last one on this list is Leave Me Breathless by Jodi Ellen Malpass. I honestly know nothing about this book whatsoever. Um, let me see. It's about a girl named Hannah who is hiding from her past and it's almost perfect except for the arrival of Ryan Willis. And Ryan is exactly the kind of man that Hannah needs to avoid. And Ryan is in a career of private protection and he meets Hannah and wants to be with her, I guess. Um, but Hannah has a secret past, knows that she shouldn't fall for Ryan. I really loved a Jodi Ellen Malpass book I read earlier this year. So I saw her new release in Target for really cheap. So I picked it up. I really want to read this one too as well as soon as possible. There's so many books that I need to read. It is ridiculous. Anyways, there you have it. Those are all of the books that were 2019 releases that I still have not read yet. Um, there are a lot. There are over 20, a little bit over 20 books. So I can't read all of them before the end of 2019. Um, but let me know your top three that you think I should should read before the end of 2019. Anyways, thank y'all so much for watching and I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye!